Hello and welcome to Admit One, your movie and TV podcast right here on Rabbit Hole Media. I am one of your piles of sweat, Jack Netley Thompson, and as always and as usual, I am joined by the other moisty boy, Christian Lasham. Hello. This is repulsive. Um, I don't under- I don't really know what's going on. Uh, it's luckily it doesn't seem to be affecting the stream. But the second monitor over that side of the room, which has you on for Discord, is going batshit insane right now. Good. So that's that's a good thing. I'm just gonna quickly try and solve that because out the corner of the eye, I think that's gonna make me unwell if it does that for the next hour. Oh, fucking hell. And my back hurts because this chair is poo. I need a new chair. I need to go to Ikea and just buy a load of shit. But, like an idiot, I just made my car smaller. <laughs> it's fine. You'll manage. Or if I can't get the shit in the car. No, I know what you mean. Type there'll deal. be ways. There'll be ways. They do delivery... Caravan. Ikea delivery is, is extortionate. It is. You are correct. I'm pretty sure the last time that we got a bunch of stuff from Ikea, we did just hire a van. I'm also not doing that. The reason I drive there is to avoid spending money. I think sh- I think it would be cheaper to do delivery than hire a van. Probably depends what you're getting delivered, to be fair. True. True, true. But anyway, we're here. I'm gonna let's make this fucking quick. I can try. Thor, Love and Thunder. Did you like it? Are we gonna do it that quick? Are we just gonna do it, <laughs> do it as a yes or no? <laughs> end the show. <laughs> Essentially, that's what, that was where my joke was going. I can't even put my arms down on the desk because I I become desk. <laughs> Uh, to answer your question of Thor, Love and Thunder, did I like it? The answer to that question is not really. Oh, I fair. I was not really enamoured with it. I didn't hate it by any sense, but I walked away feeling particularly underwhelmed and uninspired, which is very disappointing for me because Thor, as I've said before, has become my favourite character really in the MCU. I think Chris Hemsworth is one of the best castings in the MCU. And to be fair, he's not the problem with this film. Um, Ragnarok is up there it's one of my favourite MCU movies this is very low for me I think it was to me it felt really try hard I felt like a lot of the humour didn't hit uh, I feel like a lot of the pacing didn't hit I feel like there were quite a few cop outs early on and the few bits that were good didn't get enough time or attention because they were too busy fanning around with humour that didn't really quite work or feel like it was correct for the movie. So yeah, I, I was generally quite disappointed with it. Don't hate it. It's not in any way the worst MCU movie. And, you know, a bad MCU movie is still a good movie, typically. Um, but yeah, not wasn't, wasn't my favourite. Fair enough. Um, I think we disagree. I quite like it, but I don't know. It's hard to hard to explain, really. I do have a lot of problems with it, but I quite like it. It's not even the worst movie they've done from Phase Four for me. Like there, are, I think it's. I would one agree of the with better that. ones of. I don't think it's the worst one of the better ones four. of Phase Four. I think it's better than pretty much all of Phase One. Probably and two, other than like Winter Soldier and Guardians. Um, yeah, I think it's better than quite a lot of the MCU movies so far. Why is my mic? Why are my lights orange today? I don't. I don't know what that means. I would really be intrigued to see to know why that is, because f- like for me, I think this made so many errors, which really pulled down what could have been really good. And I think there's a lot of stuff in it that is very good, and maybe they're the bits that are good enough for you to bring it as high as you're you know as you're saying for me though they've those moments were really overshadowed by the stuff that didn't work or to my mind didn't work yeah i was gonna say because i don't think there isn't there's anything that didn't 
really work. My main criticism is that it leaned too hard in the into the comedy realm. Like Ragnarok is an action movie that's yeah. funny. This is a comedy that has action. I agree. I mean, to me, this film felt like a parody of Thor. It was just yeah. It was really heavy on the comedy, and I don't. I genuinely don't think a lot of the comedy worked. There were many of the gags that just fell so flat for me. I hated fucking Russell Crowe. I didn't find him funny one bit. I didn't laugh at him once. The the goats made me laugh I did. for the first time that goats were there. And then the goats were there oh, again. They overused. And then yeah, they, they were overused again the goats. and again. And like some of the jokes were quite predictable. Um, I think that Taika Waititi seems to have forgotten that not only are there more bands in the world than Guns N' Roses, but Guns N' Roses have more than those four songs. Um, it just all felt very cliche. They're just such the cliche picks of songs. When the next one came on, it's all right, we've now got this Guns N' Roses. Great, okay, this isn't original. Um, I do think they overuse Guns N' Roses, but I mean, it. I, I get what you're saying in that regard, but it, won't, it wouldn't have had... For some, obviously you're saying it didn't have much of an impact for you, but it wouldn't have had any impact for anyone if they picked an obscure Guns N' Roses song that no one had heard before. Using a Guns N' Roses song's fine, but using f- the four songs that everyone knows, like, why didn't you just pick a different band, a different thing at that point? I don't, I, I couldn't work out. Oh, yeah, as, the, as I said. And yeah, they, they use guns. They, they reference they guns, guns and roses yeah. as well. Like they they make a reference to them at some point and talk about them, and it's in, in this weird kind of meta way. And it was just like, I mean, I feel like immigrant immigrant song using that song worked and worked as a theme for Thor really well. Uh, and again, a bit of a cliche choice, but it worked really well in that moment to have immigrant song. And then. With this, they kind of tried to take the similar thing, but just almost it was like they couldn't pick which Guns and Ro- Guns and Roses song to use. They thought, ah, oh, we'll just use all four. Yes. Uh Jack's lost what I'm saying. I got my, I got like 0.5 percent of that point, but I got the end of it, and that was the last 0.5 percent. Couldn't pick which is all I heard out of that entire sentence. Um. So I'm assuming you're saying couldn't pick which song to use. Correct. The one they should have done is the one at the end, November Rain, and none of the others. Agree. Should have done. I agree. <laughs> because uh, that one was actually cool. Yeah, worked really well in the scene as well. Yeah, but the others were just okay. Surely, like especially in the opening, we're gone straight into spoilers. Oh, yeah, especially, yeah, yeah. especially in the opening. Um, when it did Welcome to the Jungle. Mm-hmm. Like, this is the first time we're back in a Thor movie since that. Do you not think that, that would have been better to use the Immigrant song again? Yeah, I agree. Because <laughs> it seems like the obvious choice. Why wouldn't That's kind of become the Thor theme in a way, so use that. Yeah, it's... Yeah, and then when Paradise City came on, I was like, all right. Yeah. Fine. And then a bit later, uh, and then Sweet Child of Mine came on at some point. Yeah, I can't even remember when. Which is why I was just like, oh, right, okay, it's all we're getting, you know. And I, I hated the opening. Well, not the opening sequence with Gore. I mean, the God in that sequence was a bit weird, but fine, I was okay with that. But the opening thing of kind of like all the stuff with the Guardians, and the really weird fight that Thor had in that opening sequence where he did the weird karate leg thing. Just f- I didn't mind that. It just felt odd. I didn't mind it, but it felt odd. it just felt like a weird decision to see Thor doing something that kind of uh, comical, for lack of a better term. Um, and then they just fucked the Guardians off. Like the Guardians are gone. Now. Yeah, I'm glad they did that though. Well, you see, my issue is, and this is where I was kind of getting out with the Miss Marvel conversation the other day. They left Endgame, setting up this idea of Thor and the Guardians are going to be off gallivanting around the galaxy together. That brings questions. All right, Thor's going off with the Guardians. What are they going to be doing? What's going to happen with them? Nothing. Nothing. Just fucked them off. And that just felt to me like, okay, can you... when we're on top of the every other thread they've not yet pulled that they've been starting to set up, that was just really frustrating to see them kind of cop out of that. And for me, I got the impression 
obviously I don't know this for sure, but I got the impression that they had planned to go and do something with those characters together. And then James Gunn came back to Guardians and they're doing something different. So they've just had to bail on that um, and find a way of writing them out of being with Thor. It just felt like, what's the point? This has added nothing to anything. You're just tying up a loose end from Endgame. For sure. I never, but because we knew there was a Guardians 3 and a Thor 4 when Endgame came out, I'd never assumed either of them would be in each other's movies. That's just me personally. I never assumed this was going anywhere. So I'm actually glad that they got rid of the Guardians quickly. I don't mind that they got rid of the Guardians. It just felt like a waste to not do anything with them when there was, obviously, because it's weird to me that you wouldn't think there was something set up when they left Endgame with them going off together. Like, at that point, why have them it's... leave Endgame going off together? Like, where the error was made is either with the stage of having them leave together in Endgame or fucking them off in this. Where it happened or where they made the mistake kind of isn't the point. The point is the mistake was made. They never should have set that up if they weren't going to do anything with it. That's such a weird, strange choice. No, it was just... It wasn't anything to the... I mean, the error was on... With everything to do with Thor and Endgame, I really didn't like what they did with Thor and Endgame. Yeah, I haven't... I agree. Oh, Grant, I haven't liked Thor in a while. In this, I don't particularly like him either. Like, they've gone too far into making him just a fucking buffoon. Yeah, yeah, that was, I thought that as well, and they made him a fool. But that wasn't... I was expecting that because I felt the same way in Endgame as well. Mm -hmm. They just made him a complete and utter buffoon. Um, and I didn't really like Thor in Endgame, and I hated the whole... The, everything about his character arc in that movie. Yeah, no, um, I think we've agreed on that in the past. I hate it. And that's because I liked what they did with Thor up until that point. I like what they did with him in Ragnarok, coming out of the Avengers movies into Ragnarok um, and into Infinity War. I liked what they did with Thor. The best Thor has ever been is in, in, in Infinity War. I agree. And they also, they've gone back because on his good, they got a really good look for him and they've gone back to kind of slightly more original look. Um, that I get because he didn't want his hair cut off. Ah, yeah, so I, I buy he that he would grow it out again. Off. Yeah, that is fair. But even then, you could have easily written that as he didn't want his hair cut off, then he had it done, and he went, actually, I like this. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that doesn't really, that doesn't really bother me. Um, I, I agree, he looks... He does look better with his short hair, but it doesn't really... Well, whether someone has long or short hair doesn't really bother me. I mean, but, not that Chris um, Hemsworth look, anyway looked bad in this film. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I didn't mind that. But yeah, I, I, they need... Like, I love Taika Waititi, but someone else needs to take over. I feel like that maybe he was let too loose and they needed someone to rein him in. I agree. And I wonder They've if... They've let him go... You continue. I was just gonna, they, they've just let him make a Taika Waititi, Taika Waititi movie, yeah. not a Marvel movie. I wonder um, if it was a case of because Ragnarok did well, they just went, okay, you do what you want to do. Um, but maybe they should have gone, okay, we do what you want to do, but we will keep an eye on you. <laughs> yeah. Because, um, you know, as I say, I... Yeah, I think they need to check up on him now. Yeah. If it if it does another one, he needs to do it reined and controlled because this kind of this did kind of get away from him. I felt like they undercut too many of the moments. Yes. With uh but I to be fair, I also felt that with Ragnarok. Every time they tried to do a serious moment, they undercut it with a joke. It wasn't as egregious, but they did. They wouldn't let a serious moment be a serious moment. You're, you're in not Ragnarok. wrong. You're not wrong. I think that Ragnarok did a much better job of balancing that. Maybe not perfect, but I think it did a much better job of balancing that to the point where it was passable. I don't think this one did. Um, and I found myself tutting and eye-rolling more than anything else. Um, and as, there's a lot of this film where it almost felt to me like they were trying to copy Ragnarok in a way. Like, what did well in Ragnarok? Korg. All right, well, we'll have Korg in this then. and not, But not really give him anything to do he's just kind of there none of his humor worked for me in this whereas i loved korg in ragnarok but nothing he said made me laugh in this um there was just so many weird that moments i disagree with sorry 
for me, sorry, I was just saying that I disagree with. He did make me laugh in this movie, but carry on. Um, I've lost my train of thought suddenly. Oh yeah, obviously the goats using over over using the goats in the way they used those just broke so many of the moments for me. Uh, as I, said, I didn't think Russell Crowe was funny. It felt again parody. It reminded me of a fucking Monty Python thing. It just felt odd. Um, I get the idea of they're going Zeus. You know, Zeus is a bit of a dickhead. Zeus is a bit of a cocky, arrogant dickhead. I have no problem with that, but I think the Russell the way Russell Crowe played it was just bizarre and they really went on that scene for a long time as well um and that reminded me almost of kind of they went oh the uh jeff goldblum's character was a good quirky villain a good quirky villain to have in the middle of the film for a while we'll do a similar thing with russell crowe and we'll make him a quirky villain to have in the middle of the film for a bit a part way antagonist even though he's not really the main villain of the film um just an obstacle there was just so many elements that just felt like a, 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 almost a copy of Ragnarok, um, but didn't quite work in the same way. And the reason I think that's a shame is I, I genuinely think that um, Christian Bale was great. Mm -hmm. I think No, he was. I think Christian Bale was great. He had some really good moments, um, had some great dialogue. Uh, he was, I think his balance of comedy and eeriness with serenity and and uh, 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 uh and um i don't know what word i'm looking for what's the word i'm looking for don't know his creepiness i think the balance of that with him was really really good the scene where he's doing like the puppet show for the kids was excellent mm -hmm. excellent and i think the opening scene with him like the way he was begging and like pleading and praying to that God when he first meets him, the way he performed that was really, really good. But he was really hardly in the film. And even though the story, the main plot from A to B was, you know, about stopping him, it seemed like it didn't, it seemed very, um, okay. Why do you want to stop him killing the God so really? Because you've just established all the gods are dickheads. Like you, you just want him to not kill you, but you've also killed the, one of the gods. So why don't you just, like make a pact with him or something. I don't know. It seems like there's an easier way of doing this. And I, it just, it felt like oh, this, none of this seems to matter or mean anything or be, but, and this is the MCU problem we've been saying recently. It doesn't feel like it's part of anything bigger. It just, it's his own standalone thing that feels irrelevant. Um, and just, Oh, okay, fine with neck. What's next then sort of thing, as opposed to, Oh, what's next? I don't know. I just, I wanted to be happier. <laughs> I mean, they established Zeus was a dick for sure, but not the rest, not all of the rest of them. Um, and I, I mean, if, could you could even boil it down to a selfish reason? He is one of the gods. But yeah, no, I said I get the idea that he doesn't want him to kill him, but he's just killed yeah. a god. Thor well, just killed I'm a god. Sorry, I, again, I didn't get half oh, of I your see. point. So sorry, I missed that. That's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, like um, I, yeah, I, I get that Thor. Like, doesn't want Gore to kill him. I understand. But the idea of him not wanting to kill all of these other gods when he started to realize that the gods, you know, many of the gods are a problem anyway. He's just killed Zeus as far as he's concerned, which is... Yeah, I mean, to be fair, my, I, the, what my takeaway was he's only this invested to get the kids back. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's a good point. Otherwise, he probably wouldn't he wasn't let it go. involved. He wasn't involved before the fight where they took the kids. Yeah, and he was just there to protect Asgard more than anything. Yeah, very uh, good. Then they took the kids, and he was there to get the kids back. I don't know if he overly does care about the rest of the gods. Uh, I think that's a good point, but also at the same time, I think kind of reaffirms the idea of. So what really was like, was that it? Was that all of this was about was just saving some kidnapped kids, which for an MCU movie, a Thor MCU movie just doesn't feel like a big enough stake in the grand scheme of things. Maybe, maybe I'm overthinking that, but I think just this far into phase four, I want there to be something bigger now than just these little. Same, which is, um, you, you, you've definitely taken a turn. I remember, I remember you saying that you're enjoying these seven. Oh no, it was the exact opposite. You don't like it being completely separate is what you said. Yes, 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 I remember. I remember, I remember. This is from ages ago when phase four just started. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, no, I know. I don't like yeah. it being incomplete. I, I'm quite happy to watch. And I think a month ago I was saying, yeah, I'm quite happy getting these little individual stories at the so far as long as it builds to something. But it's now not building to anything. So now I'm getting to the point where it's, okay, now I've had enough. I'm now frustrated I've had with enough. it, yeah. I agree. I agree. Um, I, like, there's just, as you say, there are just more and more threads of where things can go. And it's just like, well, none of these threads are the same thread. Yeah. So where is it going? Or are they trying to do multiple things at once? But mm -hmm. in which case, kind of make that clear and make it clear which thing is leading to which thing. Mm -hmm. Because at the moment, we've, you've, we've got nothing. And it's fucking irritating me. Every time we watch something Marvel, it's just like, this has gone nowhere. Yeah. But uh, just to heart back a little bit, uh, you said, I will say I did find Court quite funny in this movie still. And uh, in terms of he had nothing to do, he had nothing to do in Ragnarok either. Um, he was just there I, <laughs> in Ragnarok. I agree. Um, I, in Ragnarok, though, he was used in a smaller amount, and I think they used him as a good comic relief, and it made sense he was there. For me, it was weird. It was weird that Korg tagged along. It was weird how present he was in the film. I don't agree with that at all, personally. But I just don't see why. Why he's been tagging along with, he's been tagging along with Thor for years. I don't know why he would just suddenly stop now. Has he been tagging along with Thor for years? We've had a film. Yeah, no, which but that was years ago. <laughs> um, he's been with Thor since at some point in the middle of the blip. Yeah, I just which for them was could be up five six years ago, like been with them for a long while. Essentially, by the seams of it, he didn't tag along for Infinity War, mm. but it does seem like he all went essentially straight back to Korg, Meek, Korg and Meek mm -hmm, when um, after well, after Infinity War. Yeah, I suppose. I mean. Again, though, my problem comes down to really that I didn't find on this watch, I appreciate a second watch. I might react differently. I often do that, as do we all. But on this watch, I just didn't find anything he said particularly funny. Whereas I have all these moments, these standout funny moments from Korg and Ragnarok to this day. I just don't have any. I can't remember anything he said in this. But if you ask me yeah, for um, a core quote right now, I could think of many from Ragnarok. Can't think of one. That's fair. Uh, Hannah has said Korg's life partner Dwayne was tw technically Dwayne the Rock. Thank you for explaining that very, very <laughs> obvious joke. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the entire point. I don't think that was meant to be missed. <laughs> uh, but obviously the Dwayne thing, the, you had the joke. Uh, um, I, I got a good chuckle out of the... Um, when they were going around the room after Thor was made naked. Um, I can't remember what he said. He just says he loved it, and but it was this is the way he said it, and that was that was quite chucklesome. Chucklesome. I will admit, I was briefly heartbroken when I thought he died. Of course, I, even I had yeah. that still. To be fair, I still did have that. Don't kid yeah, it. I was. Um, <laughs> Oh, God, yeah, no, I would have been like, nah, I'm not watching the rest of this movie. <laughs> That's one thing they did do too many times, I think. Fake out on the dead. Mm -hmm. They did it twice, which is too many times for one movie. Because uh, they kind of do it with Valkyrie as well. I did also have in this, first of all, I was cackling like an idiot when we had another play from uh, Matt Damon, Luke Hemsworth yeah, and I Sam think Neill. At first, I, I was on board, but then they brought out Melissa McCarthy. It went on I, too long. Yeah. And then they brought out Melissa McCarthy, who I despise. Yes, yes. absolutely. And it went from, yeah, to, oh, God. Uh. <laughs> it just ruined it. Yeah, And I did enjoy ruined them it. in the bit after the disaster. And they're like, should we start working on a play of this? I did enjoy that. <laughs> I didn't hear a no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I I enjoyed them, but obviously Matt Damon is always a treat. Mm -hmm. 
Um, what was the other bit I was about to talk about? I was about to talk about. I will say this did have one of the most visually interesting scenes in all of the MCU. I think I know what one you I mean. Think. I was going to talk about this. Yeah. It was the fight on the the shadow. Realm. Before yes. we get into that, that was another joke, and the only time after the first introduction that the goats got me. Oh, when they crashed. They crashed into the planet, yeah, because <laughs> it was way closer than they thought it was. Absolutely, and then the goat sound and stuff. But I genuinely think that gag would have been better if we hadn't heard the goats screaming 20 times before that. I think if we'd okay, had yeah. the goats screaming when we first had them introduced, maybe had a reminder that the goats scream at one point and then got that, I think that would have been funnier still. I just Those goats screaming just got so overdone. Yep, 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 yep. Agreed, agreed. But no, I think that fight with the... No, not only just the black and white with the splashes of colour from, like, the Thunderbolt and from Mjolnir and, and Stormbreaker, but just the way it was... Just the way it was shot and the way it was choreographed and everything, I think that was the most... Probably one of the most visually interesting fights we've had I in all of the MCU. I wholeheartedly agree, yeah. Stunning. I thought it was stunning. I remember when it when it got to it and it first shifted to black and white, black and white. I went, oh, now we got a black and white section. Great, fucking hate black and white sections. But when they started to slowly introduce the idea that the other light sources were emitting color, that became really a, an interesting concept and a really interesting visual thing. And you're, you're right. I think it looked great. Mm hmm. Yeah, and I. It's one of those I can kind of see. Obviously, it's nonsense, but I can kind of see, like the logic in a place that is yeah. or appears black and white like, that exists it would just be a place where everything absorbs all of light mm -hmm. that's why it's all shadows because it absorbs all light and if it absorbs all light you wouldn't have color yeah because obviously come color come come color comes from the come. um <laughs> reflection of certain light so <laughs> If it absorbed it all, there wouldn't be any light. So I, 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 I yeah, I just really like that scene. I just, the whole scene in general, just from a performance standpoint, from a cinematography standpoint. Um, yeah, I do think as much as I did enjoy this movie, and I would rank it above quite a lot of the other movies. But even so, I do think there is a much better movie hidden in there. I yeah, I I totally agree. I mean. I want to be clear. I don't think it's a bad movie. I mean, I don't think any Marvel movie is particularly a bad movie. We've said this before. Even the worst Marvel movies are still good movies. This is in company of 30-odd other projects. Many of them are some of the, you know, I think some of the best things put to cinema. So to be up high, it's got to be really set in the bar. Mm -hmm. And I just think this one misses that for me. So even being a low tier Marvel movie, that's still in pretty good fucking company, you know? Um, sure. So it's, it's not a terrible, terrible movie by any sense, but I think the main issue I have is you've hit the nail on the head. I think there was a much better movie, movie within this that was overshadowed by really quite avoidable mistakes. And that has just been frustrating and disappointing, especially for me, because I like this character and I like what Thor had become as, as this part of the franchise. So that was just really, yeah, disappointing for me. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. I think, I think something very strange has started happening with Marvel movies as of this year. And that's, they're insistent that they're short. Yeah, I've noticed that. And... When has that that A Marvel movies have never really been short, and B when like you're just cutting shit out. Mm -hmm. You're not really like they don't seem to be adjusting the script or anything for it. They're just cutting stuff out. Like imagine like imagine if this was normal length, you got an extra half an hour on this movie. Like I would imagine there'd be more gore screen time in there. Um. So, so more set up for him you get some you could have some more of the because when they do actually try and have proper serious moments i think they do them in this movie weirdly enough like on the couple of occasions that they actually let a serious moment happen they do it quite well mm -hmm. and there's two in this movie it's when 
Jane tells Thor she has cancer. Yep. And then when Thor, Thor, Thor figures out that Mjolnir is killing it. Mm-hmm. And you have those two scenes and you could have, could have had more in the movie to kind of build their relationship back up because it just... They meet and it's back again. Yeah. Like there's, there's, there's no set up and there's no build up. And I think the same thing applied to to Doctor Strange in a lot of ways. They, they, they've openly said forty five minutes of that movie were cut out. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of the, as much as I really enjoyed Doctor Strange, like a lot of the issues with Doctor Strange was the pacing. Yeah. You didn't have any time to really set anything up. You just kind of did and then said mm-hmm. as opposed to showed. Um, so I, I really hope this doesn't become a trend going forward that they try and hit this two-hour mark at the sacrifice of quality. I agree. Saying when you um, thought that the, the did in the show thing, that's just reminding me, there was a weird moment in this film, really weird moment in the film, where they kind of repeated some stuff. So the opening sequence was them showing you Gore's motivation. The opening sequence was him introducing you to Gore, showing you how he got to being, you know, showing what happens to him to give him his motivation. Fine. Happy with that because you're showing me and you're not telling me. No exposition. You're showing me. Great. Ram in my face in the fan. Sorry. Carry on. Uh, I was listening. And then they tell you anyway later on, even though you already know. There's this weird thing where he turns to Thor and tells him what happened. Is it? But us as the audience members already know that because you showed us at the beginning. So why are you telling me now? Why are you doing this thing where you're suddenly going, My da- I met a god, my daughter died, and, my- and the god did nothing, so now I'm going to kill them. Yeah, we know. You've, you've, that was what the whole first opening 10 minutes was. Like, It just felt odd. It was, it was so weird. You did show, don't tell, and then you told anyway. Why didn't you just leave that out from the opening sequence and do a flashback? If you wanted him to tell Thor, and you needed him to tell Thor, instead of telling us again, why don't you make that the first time you tell us and do a flashback sequence or something or... Like that was a really strange decision to me as well. I just think it was odd. Yeah, that's that is uh, fair enough. Yeah, there were a lot of oddities, but um, I don't know. I think yeah, there is. I think something's happening with Marvel movies at the moment, and I don't. It's not necessarily a good thing, and it's quite worrying. Um, the no direction really kind of just making a movie with within itself and therefore letting these directors kind of just go rogue to a degree because they're not really leading into anything. Mm. I mean, we get a couple of things that could possibly come from this and then some very I'm pulling threads here. Yes, you're right. But, we have got a couple of things that could possibly come from this, but we also have a couple of things that could possibly come from every single project we've had in Phase 4, and nothing's come from any of them, not to mention things that still haven't really been tied up from the Infinity Saga, really. <laughs> it's just like, I understand what it is we're going towards. No. that's Yeah, I'm getting kind of frustrated with it and i don't think we're gonna that's gonna be a solution from black panther either obviously she hulk is not gonna not gonna start doing that Mm. and well i still think i know you said the other day that uh, apparently they're due to announce what the next big story arc is going to be but I still firmly believe that that's something they've only settled on recently. And when all of these films and projects were in production and writing, they hadn't decided. And I think that's a lot of the problems that we're seeing, I think, spawn from that. That they don't, they didn't know as they were putting these films together what that direction was. So they had to just leave them all open enough where they could be interspersed wherever they choose to go. Um, I'm convinced that's the case because that's how it feels. Because it's never... Marvel's never been like this, or MCU has never been like this. Even the early ones that weren't really that connected still had a clear direction that everything was going to be connected. And quite early on, people had worked out this is going to be the Infinity Saga because they were putting all these little inklings in that this, the Infinity Stones and stuff like that, and the different things were being there, being revealed. It became clear that's where it was going to go, and they stuck with it and they nailed that landing. And it, at the moment, it just feels like with this 
with what we've seen so far in these projects, it feels like they're not that sure what they want to do. Yeah, I think until we know what it is, I don't think we can know. Well, of course. Not, obviously, we can't know um, whether or not this was planned. I think once we get what it is, I still think at the moment, it was probably just like, they've known this plan for a while, but shit kept changing. Yeah, there is an um, element of that for sure. Stuff kept changing, like as I said the other day, like they got the stuff from Fox back and then all these different characters that they needed to introduce and what have you. It's almost like, in a weird way, they're not really taking into account yep. the TV shows, in a way. Mm-hmm. And that, um, yeah, it's, it's odd. I, I, it's becoming a problem just because it's doing exactly what DC did and DC failed. Um, so they really, really, really need to get into it like quickly, um, and start start going. Even if they are doing multiple threads, they need to start pulling on some of these threads. Because, yeah, I don't. It's while I enjoy all these individual projects, it's not what I like the MCU for. I wouldn't exactly. be this into the MCU if all of these movies were just individual movies. Exactly that, and you know, and. At the moment, I'm starting to get to the point, and I, I, you know, I was totally different to this two years ago, three years, whatever it was. But I'm starting to get to the point where I'm like, oh, maybe you should have just stopped after Endgame. Maybe you should have just stopped. <laughs> and I was not that person. I was like, yep, yeah, give me more Marvel. More Marvel's fine by me. But now I'm getting to the point where I'm like, oh, I'm kind of bored. <laughs> not at a point where, I'm, well, I think they should have stopped. Um, but. But they need to do something because yeah, they gotta fix it. They need to fix it. They need to fix it and fast. And I just hope they realise that because, like, for the most part, they are still getting decent reviews and people. But I just hope they're listening to when people say like, "We need fucking more. We need it to be the MCU. We don't need it to be a series of individual movies yeah. that don't lead into each other." Like, we've just had Ms. Marvel. With Moon Knight, with Doctor Strange, and Ms. Marvel, and Thor, and this year, and none of it has touched anything. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's with Thor though. Back to Thor, not the overall picture, because there's a lot of stuff in Thor we haven't really spoken about. Um, Natalie Portman, thoughts? She's Natalie Portman. <laughs> so uh, I liked what they did with her. Um, I do think, as you say, they rushed her back into that relationship with Thor real quick. They went from zero to on it quickly. I guess for her, the end is nice, so maybe it's going to be a little bit more like, yeah, well, may as well. But uh, <laughs> it did feel... I don't buy for a second that she's dead. Well, based off the post credit scene, she doesn't seem to be. Oh yeah, they're in Valhalla, but I mean, yeah, but so what, she's dead. But I mean, yeah, what is Valhalla if not just another realm that they can probably reach? This is a this is a, this is a movie universe where they can literally jump between universes. So uh, I think it is absolutely conceivable that she's reachable in Valhalla. Yeah. I either think she's absolutely one hundred percent going to either. I don't think they'll go to Valhalla, but I think she'll come back. Um, I don't really want that to happen because that's yet another fucking cop out. But um, or that we'll just get something. We'll get like a Mighty Thor movie, and it's somehow to do with Valhalla. Who knows? Mm. Who knows? Also, don't like it's very. Very weird that she even got to Valhalla. It is very weird. It does imply that the existence of Valhalla does imply that there's an avenue to bring back other dead characters like um, Heimdall, even our Loki, as I'm going to refer to him, the the developed Loki. Loki is not in Valhalla. I see. Is he not? How do we know that? Well, because A, he was just left there as a body. He didn't disappear into golden stardust. Not and B, on. he didn't... 
he wasn't he he was a piece of shit. <laughs> he had redeemed himself by that point though, and then died in battle. Uh he's also not as guardian. And neither's Jane. Well yeah, I know, but she had the power of thought. She, oh that's a good point. Yeah, okay, fine. Fair enough. I'll take that. That's a fair argument. One I hadn't considered. It's a fair point. Yeah, and and yeah, it, it was the main thing though is he didn't disappear into the gold sparkly sparkles. Yeah, I mean that they could easily do a cop out of you just you didn't see that on camera. That's the sort of bullshit they'd do. Um, you're right, but that's so easily written around. Yeah, I know. The, I the, the 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 compelling argument is actually the whole she had the power of Thor thing. That's that's, that's a good point. I just didn't even think of. Didn't cross my mind. I don't know if Jack's frozen or if he's just not saying. Oh, he's he's. No, I was, re I was reading the reading the chat. There's a lot going on. There's, There's a lot, lot going, going on. on. Um, it's because it's not every time she lets go of Mjolnir, because she also throws it a lot. Yes. You can put Mjolnir down without going back into Jane. He was Odin's son, regardless of not being Odin's son. But th that's he wasn't Odin's son, though, was he? That's the whole <laughs> point. No, like, yes, he was adopted. So in human terms, you would always say that it's his son, but um, he wasn't. So he wouldn't go to Valhalla. Whether or not you think you should go to Valhalla doesn't really come into the fact of going to Valhalla, does it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. But anyway, we know he's not in Valhalla, and we know they're not going to bring him back, because if they bring back a second fucking Loki for a fifth fucking time, I'm going to lose my fucking shit. I'm so over Loki. Well, you need Does, to get... And I don't want them to bring... You I don't need to want get them to under bring Loki because they're filming season two. Yes, I know, and it's going to be shit again, isn't it? Um, yeah, I don't want them to keep bringing back characters. It's really irritating. I hate. Look, it's not even just a Marvel thing. I don't like it when just characters keep coming back from the dead. Like Gamora's back. Black, Black Widow wasn't resurrected, but she's been in movies sh since she died. Um, obviously, I think we're going to get Jane back, and Heimdall's in it again, and Loki keeps coming back. He's died millions of times. <laughs> and end. <laughs> and scene. Um... What was the other thing? Also, how, why has Hannah said also fuck gamers? What's happened there? Oh, Gamora. Gamora. Okay, I thought it was just an attack on us for a second for no reason. G Gamora is one of the least interesting characters out of all of the MCU, and they seem to be doing a movie entirely focused around trying to find her. <laughs> um, uh, what's something else I was going to say? Obviously, okay, so then we leave Thor, that he's now a dad Thor. Mm -hmm. So that little girl apparently is Chris Hemsworth's daughter. He is. And there's apparently a few of the actors, the cast children are in this apparently. Um, so I yeah, I know Christian Bale's daughter's in there. Taika Waititi's daughter's yeah. in there. I oh. think, I could be wrong, Taika Waititi's daughter is the one with the teddy bear, I think. I think it yeah, might be correct, maybe. Uh, I wonder though if the idea of now having him with a dad as a dad... Gives him a responsibility, which means it's going to turn the character into being less of a fool because he can't afford to be a fool anymore. Because the implication I've got, they made him a fool because he's kind of gone in this weird mental downward spiral. But now he's got something to have to actually fight for. Maybe it will bring him back to being a little bit more sensible. I hope so. And they don't need to go, I'm not saying go all the way back to Dark World no. 4. But even then, I think he had a bit of a comedic spin to him. But... Like, in Infinity War, Thor. Mm hmm I agree. Where he was funny and he was playful, but he was also a hardened fucking Asgardian warrior who took this shit seriously. 
Hannah wants Chris Hemsworth to do what? <laughs> Make her pan flaps. That's literally what he does in the movie. <laughs> uh, I'm just turning it into a worse joke. I'm sorry. Do you, want some of this? Do you want some of this water spray? Just to cool you down. There you go. Has that helped? Fuck you. What? <laughs> I said fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear. Hannah says as I she probably wrote have it, loads to say, but Hannah said as she wrote that it did look rude. So, uh... I probably do have loads more to say. I just can't process information. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, again, I said said before there was a lot of good stuff. This, a lot of the action scenes were great. Um, it looked visually awesome really bright and colorful but then in places when it did that stuff in the shadow thing that contrast was really interesting uh what was this you were just doing? other than jane's helmet jane's helmet jane's helmet was weird the and there was there was a couple of scenes where this happens anyway in superhero movies i've always thought this when you see a, a superhero just in the street in their superhero costume it always just looks odd and there is a scene where the two of them are talking in um Uh, there's, 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 a, there's a scene where just Jane and Thor are talking in their Thor costumes in Asgard and like the lighting and everything it's just like it looked like we were just watching like two Disneyland characters just having a chat <laughs> like the <laughs> suits were so brightly coloured and vivid and and comic book styly in some ways it was just like some of this was weird but it's fine it's fine is what it is uh, Hannah has just asked what does Chris think Jane's catchphrase turned out to be didn't it turn out to be eat my hammer? Have I missed something? No. She whispered in his ear. I've finally figured out what my catchphrase is and then whispered in his ear. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know. What do you reckon? I have no idea. Uh, even Taika Waititi says he has no idea. Oh, good. Great. Great. Natalie Martin. Portman didn't... <laughs> Natalie Portman didn't tell him what he what she said. It's a great writing, but it doesn't need to be there, does it? Because <laughs> we're not meant to hear it. It's just weird to then have a... I think. But then Natalie Portman actually said something? That's odd. Yeah, because Chris Hemsworth has also said in interviews that he re he won't say what it was. Oh, maybe it was like some smut. I Yeah, I think it was something really rude. Yeah. I only took this film on so I could see your body again. <laughs> <laughs> or just, or just like, I'll let you use the hammer on me. <laughs> I'll let you hammer my pan flaps. <laughs> hey, there you go. You found it. You found it. <laughs> I will watch it again, though. Yeah, my negative comments aside, I will watch it oh, again. Yeah, I'm not, I'll never. I'll never skip it. Yeah, and in my I, MCU rewatches. I may well enjoy it more a second time. Now I know what it is. You know, now I know what to expect. To be fair, I did. Oh, have you seen it twice? Yeah, I saw it today. Right. Okay. So yeah, maybe I will just enjoy it a second time. Now I know what it is. You know, now I'm going in with. A yeah, exactly. I think that's what it was for me as well. As I knew what it was, mm. and I knew what I was expecting. I didn't not enjoy it the first time. I laughed quite a lot. I enjoyed the action scenes, and I walked away overall going, I enjoyed that. Um, but I did appreciate some of the other scenes a little bit more now that I knew mm. what to expect. I will say the only time Russell Crowe made me laugh was his little walk down the stairs. I, I, I'll give you that. The little skip thing down the stairs where he sort of lifted his skirt up. Yeah, yeah, that one. That one. Uh, I suppose we've talked about one post credit scene. Oh, yeah. There was another one. Yeah. I, I Abs. What? I said abs. What about abs? That man had a lot of them. Oh, I see. The post credit scene where... With... With Zeus, you mean? Yes. I don't remember there being an Abbey man. I believe you. That was the entire point of the post credit scene. What have I missed? What have I forgotten? Wasn't it him? He's alive. He's 
He was talking to someone and said oh, he's oh. sending someone after Thor. Yep, yep, I remember. I'd forgotten. I'd forgotten. Yep, 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 yep. I'm assuming you know who that is. Uh, no, I was going to look it up because I remember I turned to Corinna and went, should I know who that is? And she went, I don't know. Like, it probably is someone I know. I just didn't recognize him. And then I never looked it up. Zeus's son? No, I know who Hercules is. Sorry, I thought you meant the actor. Oh, no, no. No, I knew it was no, yeah. that's Hercules. Yeah, I knew it was Hercules. I Sorry, I thought I I meant the actor. I was supposed the, to know who the actor who is. Who the actor is seemed completely irrelevant yeah. to the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, no, I just thought it was clear as day it was Hercules. So when you asked me that, I just assumed you were talking about the um, the actor. Because, yeah, I just thought it was clear as day it was Hercules. Yeah, I was just, I've seen him in some things, but I don't know who he is. Um, my brain... Um, my brain is melting. Brett Goldstein. Yeah, my brain is melting. Um, uh, my brain is absolutely melting. I don't remember. What was I saying? My brain. Oh, Hercules. my brain saw him and went, I swear that's the guy playing Namor. And then my. So I looked again and I was like, oh no, you're just a racist. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, because yeah, they're very different people. Um, um, but yeah, that post-credit scene is another thing that again annoyed me. It was like, oh, okay, another thread, another thread for you yeah, to not. This one, on. this one does seem like it's going to be specifically tied into the next Thor movie, though, as opposed to setting up a thread for the universe as a whole. It was the same thing that I said about mi the Miss Marvel post-credit scene mm. when that set with captain marvel when that set up a thread because it's like that's setting up a thread for the next movie specifically mm. involving mm. them so i feel like be because this is specifically setting up thor 5 whatever that may be um then it's doesn't really matter that it's not going to be pulled on for a while woof um, because we know it's coming in that particular movie um, but yeah I uh, just want to quickly interject Hannah has said how have you not realised when you ha when I have a sorry when you have a question that nine times out of ten I've already asked in the chat the honest answer there Hannah is there is often quite a substantial delay so a lot of the time by the time we see any answers you've put we've moved on Hannah says I didn't realise Meek was a girl and Neither did I, so I did some research. In Ragnarok, they weren't. Where was I, I I don't remember the film. Was Meek a girl in this at any point? Yeah. Interesting. She's wearing like suits with like a blouse and a skirt, and they refer to her as she. Maybe. But Meek in Ragnarok, is... they refer to Meek as he. They do. Maybe Meek has transitioned. Maybe. Maybe. It's plausible. Taika Waititi does describe this movie as very gay. And it was. I mean, not really. It was quite gay. There was just a lot of... Two characters? <laughs> uh, Hannah says maybe it's like a clownfish or a frog and you can change gender. Be careful making claims like that on the internet. Because that could be misconstrued. It could indeed. It could indeed. I was about to be one of those people, <laughs> jokingly. Um, I mean, there were gay characters. There was nothing particularly about the film that was gay. It depends how you look at it, I guess. I mean, it was... I'd argue it's probably more camp than gay. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's 80s cheese. Yeah. 100%. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there was some cheese. 100%. What does bother me, though, and I'm not saying people have to love this movie. It's far from perfect. It's people t talking about the how the eat my hammer bit was cringe and why that's this is then a bad movie. I was like, do you know what? Yes, it was cringe. 
intentionally. I don't think that was the, the my entire hammer, purpose. I don't think Eat My Hammer was the cringiest bit of that scene either. I actually think when she said, secondly, my name is Dr. Jane Foster, I actually found that bit cringier than Eat My Hammer. Fair. But you're right. You are right, by the way. You are right. Like that is the the point is it's supposed to be cringy and a bad catchphrase. That's very much the point. Because she hasn't quite mastered being Thor. She hasn't quite got the charm. No. And um people on the internet are idiots. Ah, and as yes. I always say, context is highly important. And yet the internet is insistent on ignoring any and all context from any and all things. Yep. I think most people don't understand um, what context is. I think no, a lot of people think context is the first page of a book. <laughs> hey. Anyway, I'm at now my that. end of what I have to say on uh, Thor Love and Thunder. I'm at the end of my tether. Yeah, a lot of it is because moisture is me. I, it's not necessarily that I couldn't keep talking about this movie. It's that I don't want to be. So I don't want to I die in the next think, ten minutes. I, I I I can't think of anything to say. I can't. I had a lot of it. Yes, yesterday at work, I had a few conversations like this with customers, where just in the middle of a sentence, I completely forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> Like, and I was showing sorry. a customer how to do something and then halfway through I was like, I'm sorry, I've completely forgotten what I'm doing. <laughs> Why am I on your phone? <laughs> it's very like, warm. Yeah, I was just like, it's hot. I can't focus. I think I'm about to die. I've drunk in eight pallets of water. Uh, I did and... thoroughly enjoy that David Tennant TikTok I sent you. <laughs> I'm going to die. <laughs> And I am going to die, so this has been Admit One. Go away. <laughs> do you want me to do, do you want me to end the thing? Join our Discord because it's fun. G subscribe to us on Twitch with Twitch Prime because it's free for you and we get paid. Uh buy a t shirt with a toaster on it. Mm-hmm. That toaster is feeling an emotion. Buy it to find out which. <laughs> um, until next time. We should, oh, coming up on the channel, I should probably do that. There's a gaming stream at some point. I don't know any of the details. They're playing an escapee room game. Is that tomorrow? Is that Thursday? I, I don't know. I thought they said it was Wednesday. In which case, it's tomorrow. Friday. Tomorrow eight, Anna says Friday. Friday. In which Friday then, for whatever reason, um, there is a gaming stream. Rich and Sammy will be playing an escapey roomy type of game. I can't remember what it's called, the Escape Academy or something like that. Uh, Saturday, Rich and Chris will be back with Admit One to talk about the Grand Budapest Hotel, uh, and then immediately following that will be the weekly video game podcast. Uh, our weekly video game podcast press start, and then on Tuesday there'll be an Admit One, but they haven't decided yet. Yeah, I'm still deciding what I want to watch. And then am I on the Saturday after that? I have no According idea. According to the schedule, you are. In which case, yes. Because that's Umbrella Academy. <laughs> oh, I should probably be there for that. <laughs> um, yeah, I should definitely be there for that. Uh, especially considering I watched it now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, um, I do have one question for you before we go. Um, admittedly, it's uh, not an on-air question, but you know, just padding out the content. Um, what are you about to do? Because I presume you want to leave that room. I would like to, but my options are be in this room and have stuff to do, or leave this room and have nothing to do. See, see what I was going to sit. What I was going to ask is if you wanted to do Avengers, but I also have just realised I probably need to play some sort of intro thing before I can do Avengers. Possibly, I don't know. I've downloaded remember. it. It's been a long time. I don't know. So, well, I'll jump on we it shall, anyway. Let's investigate. Yeah. yeah. We'll investigate. I am we'll going go to there. upload this and do what Hannah says and go out in the rain for a minute before, though. Cause... 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go outside for a second. I will... If anything, I could go out and stand in the rain for about 20 minutes, and I don't think I'd be wetter than what I am now, so... Oh, yeah. I don't know. I'm... I don't know what I'm going to do. I would like to have a cold bath, but I feel like it'll be painful. And your knackers. But just in general. I think it'd be all right. I think you'll like it. Just in general. Because, I like... I haven't had a bath in a very long time. I like baths. Mm. But the hot tap in there is broken. Oh, right. Okay. So I can't have one. But I don't know how the, the cold tap works. Why hasn't your uh, plumber friend fixed it? I think it's particularly expensive. Ah, okay. Because uh, Phil is pretty good at that sort of stuff, and he's already had a look. Right. And we also live next door to a plumber as oh, well, right. and he's had a look. It will be. It's particularly problematic. Right, right. Apparently. Fair enough. Well, Helen with doesn't that, even then, have a bath anymore. Let's end this nonsense. Yes, and right. um, I'll talk to you in a minute. <laughs> Goodbye.